Hey guys, I'm Molly. Welcome to Studio Molly. And I want to talk to you today about my five most important things to think about when you are singing. Um, there's a ton of things to think about, of course, and that's one of the hardest things about singing is that you can do one thing correctly and then the next second something goes completely wrong. I tell my students it's sort of like playing golf. There's something you can always improve on, always strive to be better on, and so think of your practice as something that's constantly evolving. If you don't get it right the first time, go back and try it. Try something new the next time you sing it. The key is to go back and practice little sections of each um, of each part of the song so that you're not ignoring all the things that you're doing wrong. Um, it's fun to do karaoke, but if you're trying to learn how to sing, then um, it's important to break it down into small bite-sized chunks. So that's what I'm trying to do here on this website. So we're going to start with what I consider the most important part, which is your breath in. And now eventually you won't be thinking about this, but most of the time people are thinking about the breath a little too late or too early. And you need to think about, about it as something like a cue to what you're going to be doing, which is what we do in fitness. I cue you into your next section. So if I say, lift your hands, go, you've already thought about it, so it's there. Now one thing that people don't think about when they're singing is the cueing portion of it. So in your brain, you have to have a little fitness person that says, Molly, get ready to breathe here, and then you're ready to deliver the sound. And that is usually what people have a hard time because they're just trying to focus on uh, vowel shape, I mean, on all the millions of things that we can focus on. So let's just talk about breath and how to get the best breath in for preparation for your singing. Okay, let's take a look at that. Okay, so breath taking a breath in. When you take a breath in, you want to make sure that the air is not going too high in your chest, right? Shallow breathing, because then you can literally only hold it for a, maybe the note for four or five seconds, six seconds. But in singing, sustained singing, specifically tough songs, we want to be able to have control over that breath. And so I want you to think about the breath going in like water, okay? And if you constrict the water, if you're tightening up, it's going to be harder to get a good amount in. So just take a breath in for three seconds and sort of open your mouth like you're surprised. Good. You see that surprised look on my face? I'm lifting my eyebrows up in order to raise the soft palate so that there's room as the air goes in. So let's take a breath in for three seconds. Ready? Good. Now, you see how my shoulders did not lift up when I did that? I take them nice and low, and the breath is going in and down into the belly as opposed to shallow breathing here. One of the ways you can do that is by doing the straw exercise. So I want you to get a straw or pretend like you have a straw, and we'll try that together. Okay, so I've got a fancy straw here. Take a straw you would find on Pinterest. And, <laughs> just kidding, and we're going to put, put it in your teeth or on your lips, you know, like you're at the soda shop, and you're going to take a breath in for three seconds and feel what that sensation feels like to have a concentrated amount of air going into your body. Ready? Good. So if you notice, when I first started, I was a little taken by surprise because it was a lot of air coming through and I sort of lifted up as I did that. So I want you to not do that. I mean, you can lift up, I want you to start lifting, but try not to crouch down when you do it. And I want you to feel the air and pay attention this time to your rib cage and what's happening. So uh, I, the rib cage is gonna feel like it's going out. Of course it's not, it's lifting up, right? It's not, it's your lungs expanding and pressing against them. I don't want you to think about them as um, pushing down though. Okay, let's try it again. Good. So you'll notice when you do that, that your energy is like right here, okay, around here. And most people, when they sing, are thinking about it going into here. So think lower. Now, I don't really think about this so much yet, okay, because that's going to help us later. We'll talk about what you, what you people, what you, <laughs> what people call um, diaphragm singing. Think rib cage. I like to think about the rib cage. And then when you're breathing in, 
holding that rib cage open, okay, and connect it to the breath. Let's try it again. Good. Now, it's hold, it's out while I'm talking to you right now. It's not collapsed. That's collapsed, okay? So when you're in the car and practicing, um, just breathing in the car, it's a great place to do that because your back is up against the car seat, so you can really feel your rib cage engaging, okay? So I want you to pretend now like you have the straw. Tuck your, your lips, pretend you have the straw, and then feel, recreate that same sort of breath in. Here we go. And here's the rib cage engaged. Now as I'm talking to you, I'm keeping the rib cage engaged and kind of pressing out because then I have reserves to sing later. So now let's talk about the breath going out. Okay, now that we talked about breath going in, we want to talk about how the breath goes out. Now there's lots of things to talk about, so I'm just going to keep it basic right now. I think the most important thing when you are putting your breath out, taking your breath out, is to think of your air, like I talked about before, as water. Now if you were to spit water out, you wouldn't try to hold the water back in because you would choke. So think about letting that air go as a steady stream of water. And what I'm going to do in this exercise is breathe into my straw for three seconds, and then I'm going to exhale on a for, let's say, six seconds, okay? And I want you to concentrate on keeping your rib cage engaged and letting that air go out nice and evenly. Nothing else. Let's not think about anything else. Just those two things. Straw. And if you don't have a straw, just pretend. Three seconds in, six seconds out on a... Here we go. And... Good. So it's very simple, but this is the most important thing that is, gets missed, is breathing in and exhaling out. That simple factor is something that people have a hard time remembering when they're singing. And if you do this at the beginning of your workout, then you're going to find that you're more focused and more, your delivery is very specific. So let's do that again. Ready? Three seconds in, six seconds out. So when I'm doing that, what I'm really thinking about, as well as keeping a steady amount of air, I'm thinking about my rib cage being engaged and it feels active and lifted, not collapsed. If you collapse your rib cage, then there's nowhere for that air to be supported and you're just dead in the water right away. So now we're going to take a look at my third most important thing and that is tension in your body. Let's take a look at that. Okay, let's talk about tension. So tension is feeling tense in areas and not letting that sound go, which is the reason why I like to add movement to all of my exercises. Because when I give you movements, it takes it away from your brain and lets you think about body awareness and what the space with it that you're working within. If you don't do that, it's really easy. When I was younger and taking from voice teachers, they would say like, relax, move in. Put your body out, chest, chest up, everything expanded. We'll loosen your tummy, loosen your jaw. And then I would end up sort of looking like this, trying to get everything relaxed. And as a result, I would do the opposite and not be relaxed. So I want you to think about your air going in like a swell of the ocean, okay? When you breathe in, right, you can see me lift up and then a exhale that air out. Now you notice that I'm not like tight not allowing that breath to go ahead. So I just want you to literally feel tensionless as you breathe in, okay? And this is not for anything to do any notes. This is just to feel what it bre the breathing in and out feels like without tension. And take your hands like this, and you're going to pretend like you have a swell of air coming in, okay? You're going to move your body back and then out. Good. So I'm going to breathe in. Here's the exercise. It goes in. And I'm going to breathe in through my nose this time just to feel, let you feel what that feels like, okay? Good. Notice that uh, the back and forth just kind of lulls you back and forth. Good. No tension there. 
and it just kind of opens everything out. Now when you breathe in through your nose, I like it because it feels like there's a rush going through the back of my throat, okay, down the throat and into my lungs and they're expanding and it feels like there's no tension, right? I'm not like this, okay? So let's just do that again together. Take your hands. Now don't let your hands go down here. Don't let them be up here. Just let them be here, present, ready to go, okay? And breathe in and out. Last one. Very easy. No tension. I feel nice and relaxed and ready to sing. Super relax. All right, let's take a look at the fourth thing. Okay, the fourth most important thing that I think about when I'm singing is my vowel shape, okay? And if we say A, E, I, O, U. Most of the time when people sing words, there's multiple vowels. A, E, I, E, O, which are called diphthongs. And you're going from one sound to the other. But a lot of times if you hit that sound, A, a couple things happen. Let's say I'm singing the word may, M-A-Y, okay? When I sing may off, what happens most of the time is I see this, may, right, you could see my voice or my lips kind of closing in on each other, okay? That was a little bit of an exaggeration, although, although a lot of people tend to do that. May, and I'm going singing through that may, the diphthong of that, okay? I want you just to hold the may vowel for at least four beats and then close the e sound, okay? So you're going to think like this, may, good, okay? Vowel shape, may, very nice. Now, if we want to do that on, let's say, hello. Hello, off, okay? Notice I didn't go, hello, and then close to the W sound, because that's not pretty to listen. We want to hear the sound on the vowels, and they want clarity on the vowels. So think of one vowel sound, and literally, ugh, that's hard, easy for me to say, literally think to yourself, four beats on that one vowel, then I get to close it, because if you're thinking that way, you'll be accountable for it. Hello, off. Very nice. Let's try it one more time. Hello, off. Nice. So I didn't go through all the vowels. There's plenty of time for that later. You'll hear, I'll go through each little section on different, different posts. But know that when you're singing, I am listening for those clarity of the vowels. Okay? A, hello. That's just a little quick, simple exercise to get you started. All right, let's take a look at my fifth thing. Okay, the fifth most important thing that Molly Bell thinks about when she's singing is tongue placement. This goes along with the vowel sound that we were just talking about. So let's take the word may, like we just did. I'm going to say may and hold the vowel, just speaking it. May. Good. I want you to take a look at where my tongue is. It's kind of resting behind my bottom teeth. May. Good. Now, my tongue tends to drop down a little lower than the average person's, or at least I notice it does when I see people sing. Good. The lower and placement that it is to, in my ears when I sing, I can feel my tongue sort of pulling down a little, gently pulling down, and the back of my throat sort of lifting up against it, okay? Almost like my tongue is doing a plie and my hands are pushing up. So there's a little bit of a spread feeling. May off. Now, can you see when my tongue's down that it's not pulling back? May. But most of the time, people are having huge amounts of tongue tension. And I'll give you some tongue tension exercises that you can do and some other postings to be continued. So, most of the time people are having difficulty with their tongue pulling back because they have a severe amount of um, tongue tension when they sing. So you'll see this happen. 
snare, and then you get that Kermit the Frog kind of sound, or is literally your tongue cutting off the back of your throat so no air can escape. So I want you to practice putting like you have glue on the tip of your tongue and putting it behind your teeth and saying, may, and not pulling back that tension. May, good. Now let's sing that, maybe a little higher, on a C, okay? One, two, three, four. May, off. Good, let's try that one more time. One, two, three, four. May, off. Nice, so that is tongue placement. Of course the tongue placement changes for every, every little vowel that you have. But I want you to be aware that pulling your tongue back and fighting with yourself over tongue, uh, tongue tension is something that you need to get rid of in order to be a good singer. And the very first thing that I'd like you to try when doing that is the tongue tension on a May vowel. Okay, now we talked a, lot, a little about hello when you do that too. So I'm gonna say hello for you now. Hello. Now what's my tongue doing? It's also behind my teeth, my bottom teeth, but it's a little bit curved. Yeah. Hello. Good. And it's kind of pulling down a little bit, just a little bit, pushing down, pulling down. I can feel it supporting, and it's pulling against the back of my throat, creating a nice little O oh sound. Now what happens if I bring my tongue back? Hello. I literally cut off my sound and oh, choke myself. So hello. Nice. Let's try that on a C, okay? One, two, three, four. Hello, off. Two, again. Hello, off. Last time. Hello, off. So we have may, hello. Let's do that again, two more times. Here we breath. May, hello. Is your tongue pulling back? It shouldn't be. Let's try it again. May, hello. And those are my five biggest important things to think about when you're singing. See you next time.